God. Well, welcome. Welcome once again. I got to get, I forgot to tell everyone to get their feet on the ground and get rooted in this place. And that especially is, should be applied to me today. I'm just too excited. I'm very excited for this day and I'm bouncing all over the place, taking a deep breath and getting myself rooted. Encourage everyone else, take a little bit of a breath and enjoy this moment. There is a gentleman who lived next door uh, to my in-laws for many years. He's gone now, um, but I wanted to begin uh, by introducing you to Frank. Frank was very eccentric, had a beautiful home on top of a bluff overlooking uh, the Puget Sound over toward Camino Island. Uh, Kirsten's parents have the house right next door. And Frank was eccentric from the moment that uh, Ken and Joan moved in next door to him. He was known to wear flamboyant suits. He was known to make statements about himself that were way beyond anything that we might consider to be true. And yet they had a certain uh, charming quality to them, so everyone just sort of nodded and went along with what Frank would say about himself. He was uh, rumored to have buried uh, much treasure on his property there in the house overlooking the bluff. And I'm sure that there have been more than one person that's gone out and tried to find some of that buried treasure. Uh, Kirsten has told me that Frank loved to dance, but he wasn't exactly a really great dancer. Um, in fact, when you were dancing with him, Kirsten, did he follow your lead or your his, or did you just try to keep yourself safe? He just stood there, and you kind of danced around him. Okay, yeah, that was Frank's style of dancing. He was sort of rooted in one place, and he enjoyed every moment of it. I think about Frank, um, one, for his eccentricity, but also for that beautiful property of his uh, that um, has become part of our family's property now after his death. And there on Frank's property is an amazing madrona tree. It sits right on the cliff overlooking the Puget Sound. We, every time we go up to Whidbey Island to see um, Kirsten's mom, we wonder if the madrona is still there or has a combination of wind and rain um, swept it off the hillside and down the bluff into the Puget Sound. So far, as far as I know, is it true, Kirsten? The Madrona tree is still there, battling every odd against its ongoing survival. There's not much bluff left right where it is. And one of these days, we think, we'll have to say goodbye to it. But for now, there on the edge of that cliff, with its roots deep and spreading back into the hillside, it remains solid, growing, beautiful, lush, against all odds. Sort of like Frank in dancing. He did it against all odds, and yet he did it speaks a little bit about our own journey of faith. From the time we are baptized till we make our affirmation of faith through confirmation or hear AOB, from that time onward as we go out into the world to live and grow and prosper as God's people, sharing the grace that has been given to us in Christ, throughout that whole journey of faith, in some ways, we do it like that madrona tree, against all odds. Jesus mentions it in the gospel reading from today about how much the world does not want a message of love and grace to spread out in the world. See, the world doesn't operate that way. It operates in terms of fear and one-upsmanship. That's the polite way of saying 
get it what you can get and leave others behind. The world does not like Jesus' message of grace and peace and truth. And so Jesus prays to the Father that for all of us, that we might have the Father's protection as we go out into the world to share that very simple message that God is for you, not against you. And you can actually live that way in your life. It doesn't have to be a free-for-all of trying to get what you can and stomping on other people to keep them from getting something you might want. Life doesn't have to be lived that way. Jesus whispers it into his disciples' ears, into our ears, and Jesus asks the Father to protect us as we do this strange and amazing work. Like that madrona tree, we get to be deeply rooted in the beauty and grace and truth of God. And for those who are our confirmants making their affirmation of baptism today, Braden and Seth, that's what you're taking on yourself today. That's what you're saying yes to. Being a well-rooted amazing, growing, living person of faith who against all odds is going to go out there and share some of that love with others in whatever way that looks like. That's what you're saying yes to today. And we know, we know long ago your families, people who love you, have walked with you, nurtured you, strengthened you, rooted you in that wonderful word that says, Braden and Seth, you are a child of God. That's who you are. You've had people tell you that from here to here. And now today, guess what? You get to say, I want to live that way for the rest of my life. Rooted in love, sharing in love. Rooted in grace, sharing grace. And those five promises that we heard about, well, guess what? You get to live them. That's what you say yes to today. The psalmist, in the psalmist's wisdom, starts out by talking that the wicked walk around and they seek um, the counsel of those who are not godly. They linger in the in the way of sinners, and they sit in the seat of the scornful. Um, and yet you, the psalmist says, is go are going to root yourself in something more than that. Like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, you are going to be rooted. The wicked get blown around by this and that, every wind of the day, but not you, Braden and Seth. You, you will be rooted in the grace and love of God. This is a treasure you get to hold. This is a treasure you get to hold close to your heart. You know what? This is the one ask I have of you this day. As you say yes in your affirmation of faith. As Jesus has held you close and asked the Father to hold you close. Take this treasure of grace. Take it out and share it with those you meet. You have sent me into the world, Jesus says, so I have sent them into the world with this treasure. Think of it this way. You're in high school. This has been a heck of a year. It's been crazy. You spent a lot of time behind a screen seeing people in two dimensions. That time is coming to an end. More quickly now, we begin to move and greet one another fully like this here this morning. Three-dimensional people getting together 
and like Tracy, trying to hug everyone. We got a restrainer. Don't worry, Tracy, your time will come. Don't worry. But this treasure of grace that you carry from this place this day, as deeply and passionately as Tracy wants to share hugs, I invite you to share that treasure of grace. There have been a lot of people that have walked with you over these past years. And I do want to single Tracy out for the way in which she can communicate that grace to others. Take her as a model. Remember the ways in which she welcomed you and shared God's grace with you. Take that with you into the world and do the same thing. Or Bruce or Sandy or Savannah who have talked to you about how deeply and firmly God loves you and will never let you go. Take that out into the world and share it with others. When the world is out of sorts and going the wrong direction, fight the current. Not because that in itself is the important thing, but it's the loving thing to do. When the world wants to hate, you love. When the world wants to step on other people, you lift them up. When the world wants injustice, you seek justice. When there's a growing pain all around you, be a healer. Swim against the current. But know that you only do so out of the great storehouse of God's love. You do that, and those promises you make today will be fulfilled many times over. God bless you, your families, all our confirmands and friends here this day.